Chelsea to lose every game left till the end of the season. What's there to stop them? Oh, la la. I think Thiago Silva mentioned something where he said they've had to expand the dressing room because they have so many players. I remember. <laughs> no, no, but to be honest. Remember that when you hilarious. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mamas and papas, everyone tuning in right now. You're welcome to Budweiser's Kings of Football Show. I am Jimmy, and with me on the show are the regular protagonists when it comes to this particular show. I was thinking about coming back with something against Chelsea, but then watching the Arsenal <laughs> game yesterday, <laughs> literally deflated. Uh, and it's one of those sad situations where you look, you're looking at this Arsenal side, and at some point yesterday, you're like, okay, this is it. The team they're definitely going to yeah. crumble they're yeah. not going to find their way back but uh if you're Arteta, you have to sell something to the fans you have to actually have to sell to the fans and to the players and say hey the objective coming into the season was finishing in the top four are they going to finish in the top four yes but everything is is riding on wednesday what wednesday is is you, you have to like play or go all out and try to win that game one man that um i'm not too happy about uh giving him this accolade is uh a man simply known as biola kazim um he's our king of the show this week it pains me to say because he got some of his predictions correct last Actually, week all my predictions um yeah he's the king of the show he got his predictions correct last week and of course he's a man you fan meaning that what he's about to say next i will not like go ahead well it's very simple <laughs> the, the, the branch is creaking and the elephant <laughs> looks like it's coming it's coming now i mean wow. for like weeks we've been joking about how the elephant is sitting pretty but it's no longer sitting pretty right squeaky bomb time it's squeaky, squeaky bomb time is. i mean I, I said to people that when to alex used to talk about squeaky bomb time we didn't have manchester city and this relentless liverpool side it was just between himself and as wenger most times yeah. and then now you have this so it's even more than squeaky bomb time and you know like I was also said, just watching that game yesterday, Arsenal Southampton, Okul after 10 minutes in, two goals down. They battled back and, you know, got three goals, but it's three draws, right? Um, two of them, Arsenal were up twice in the first half. Two and then, I mean, you know, managed to throw and two points in. The the same thing happened the yesterday. So, um, like I was also said, it's all riding on Wednesday, but we all know what's going to happen on Wednesday, right? We know when City are chasing you now and you're helping them because that's what Arsenal, you know, have done. It's three points out of a possible nine. Maybe away at Anfield, you expect them to get a win. Maybe a point is not such a bad result, mm. all told. But away at West Ham, home to Southampton, you should have all six points. Yeah, they didn't oh, do that. But, but, but Jimmy, before we go, where's, where's my camera? This is for BK here. I think during the summer, we all should go to Seville so we can be more united. I was going to say, I need to remind you, this is a wrong show. I need to remind you, this is a wrong show. I need to remind you, this is The invisible cloak you wear on this show is because this show is all about the Premier League. Yeah, that's why I'm here, actually. There was something else, that would be. <laughs> but someone that is definitely here not just because it's the Premier League but he's here because his wealth of knowledge and experience in the round leather game is something that cannot be ignored and it's so much uh, accepted that even the highest levels of authority in football seem to go to this individual to ask for his opinion we have the privilege of having this superstar legend uh, uh, an ex-international uh, 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 a champions uh, a champion of many 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 trophies a champion of many many leagues and of course a captain of super super teams Ladies and gentlemen, please give an honorable welcome to the one and only Sunday Olise. <laughs> the big man, it's good to have you, Mr. Olise. Good to have you here with us. Um, there's no easier way to start off than to ask you the obvious elephant in the room, and I say that with all pun intended. Ah, Biola, don't let me rest. <laughs> so, the elephant, as they say, is hanging on a branch, almost falling off, is where he will land, is the question now. Arsenal in the last three weeks have not been able to secure all three points. People are saying Arsenal is bottling it. The players seem to be cracking under pressure. As a player, what's what's your mindset in this? Then as a coach, what do you say to your players to get them back on track? They they have been at least eight points clear at the top of the table sometime this season. And then also, as from a Manchester City point of view, you see the person you're chasing down. They seem to be faltering. What's your mindset going into Wednesday's game? Three-part question, but welcome to the Kings of Football show. Well, thanks, thanks for having me here. Um, well, personally, to start to start with, um, this is a quite inexperienced side, looking at age. Yes. But I think the whole set of Arsenal suits the coach right. because he himself is not a high-profile coach. He is he's, he's gradually getting into it. So managing players like these ones with not very high profiles is also been easy for him. That's why they've gotten the results they've gotten so far. Right. Because you remember when he had the Obama Youngs and all of them, they were always scuffles in the team. Now he has the total control of the team and they've been able to pick up 
lots of points. In fact, they are top in the league now. Right. And uh, if you look at it from an outside point of view, it's been a great season for Arsenal. Because you are looking at just some few games to the end, and they are 16 points ahead of Manchester United, who's in third place. So that is that please is say it again. Please say it again. I don't want to attack BK. I didn't mean to attack. BK. I don't try to, uh, you know, to say that you know in in, in, rela- in relation to what's in the past. Yes, you know, when Harry Ferguson and uh, and uh, as a sure, sure, they were always going high to high rivalry. Head. So, but if you look at it on the other hand, then you ask yourself: the coach himself, how many himself, how many titles did he win as a player? Hmm. Because winning a league title is totally different than winning a cup game. The right. cup game is just game after game. Uh, you know, you play one, you, you forget. You play next, you forget. The league, winning the league, you need to be able to maintain that pressure on the team consistently for weeks. Now, um, at the end of the season, we might say the six points has now dropped. Did they drop the six points or did they win three points? Mm. At the end of the season, that's when we know all that. And now we can't really know. But as a coach, what I will be telling my players will be one. In fact, as a coach, now is the time that I have you have to bring in the experience they are lacking. Right. This is the time now you have to like downplay the pressure. This is the time you have to like tell your players, guys, social media is not for us at the moment. Let it be. You know, you might even put in some little fines in there. If if if, if you any comment on social media now, you know, I'm taking fifteen percent of your wages, you know, something like that. But just keep away from it. We have only lost the league title if it is no longer in our hands. At the moment, mathematically, it is still in your hands. What has happened yesterday you can't change. What you can change is what is coming next. It's not going to be easy on Wednesday. It's going to be fire, believe me, whether they like it or not. It's going to be hell. But then again, now they can act on it. But like I said, I think I tweeted about it two weeks ago when they drew the first game against the Liverpool, when Ramsdale had an exceptional game. Yeah. If Arsenal want to be champions, they have to muzzle. You cannot be champions by taking tackle football. <laughs> at one point, you must muzzle. Up. And muzzling right. up is that at one point, you have to even, like the game of yesterday, the moment it was 1 0 2 0, they have to start going aggressive and then even create a problem with uh, Southampton players. Psychologically, get them out of the game and get yourself into it. You know, and those were the kind of things that um, the coach, I think, and the players also have to do. Insightful, to be honest. Um, I, I was also going to ask if you were to be put uh, in a position to be in a Pep Guardiola's seat right now as uh, the coach of the chasing team, uh, someone that has won four out of five Premier Leagues yeah. in, in the last five five years. Um, he's very well, much accustomed to chasing down every trophy he's in for uh it, mm-hmm. i think manchester city is one team that whether it's the league cup or whatever cup they're playing they play their strongest squad regardless of um who the opposition is mm-hmm. from that with that backdrop of uh, information how do you go into this game on wednesday being pep guardiola knowing that you still have a chance of winning a treble this season one thing that i like a lot about guardiola's coaching style emery's coaching style and also uh, the, what you're seeing with uh, the coach of Wolverhampton is that they have a team that has the players have roles to play your job is to do this mine is to do this when they play arsenal you should expect them to be roles everywhere right there are going to be players that are going to be there just to make sure that the arsenal central defense is always moved about mm. there are going to be players that are there that their, their job is just to go over the wings there are going to be players that their job is just going to be to psychologically work on arsenal players that aren't experienced enough these are the kind of roles he will share out the game now now we can say we want about Guardiola, but um, with all due respect, it's easy to prepare your team in here when they give you one billion to build a team. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's, I, I hear you on that. But speaking, Arsenal, don't, Arsenal don't have that knowledge. They don't. They don't. Yeah, they they don't. actually they don't. don't. So speaking on that, I'm going to throw a hot take at you uh, as we're in our hot take segment right now, and I'm going to get you guys in the studio as well to to you know deliberate on it. Finishing fifth with Brighton is more impressive than winning the domestic double with Manchester City. You're asking the wrong person because I'm a Brighton fan. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> then you can give us a, their perspective. I'm a Brighton fan, I'm a, I'm a City fan, I'm a National fan, all those teams who play football. Right. Who try to work, who try to work as a team. I, those are the teams I follow in the year. So you think it's deserving that they should be in, if they get five, fifth position? Brighton is currently sixth with two games less. Yes. And this is a team with a budget that is much less than what Leicester is spending. Having changed it's, their coach this season. Exactly. It's exceptional. This is for me, it's like, no matter what happens, they should be getting ready to have a, 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 a city, a city a party this year. Mm. I think finishing fifth is way, way much, much, much higher than Guardiola winning three titles. Because to whom much is given, much is expected. Right. Exactly. Right. Having said that, it's time for us to switch gears. Mr. BK, Mr. Yes. Hot Take, Mr. King of the Show. Hmm. Let's see how you do with this hot take. Chelsea to lose every game left till the end of the season. 
You agree or disagree? What's there to stop them? Oh, la la. It's possible, Jimmy. Um, so we can break it down. First of all, you look at the background, right? They have an interim manager who's going nowhere. Clearly, he's not in consideration for the job. So why do the players actually have to listen to him, right? Um, they lost their last five games. Um, they scored what? Won their last four. They are not scoring. They are shipping a lot of goals. And then we, we saw the game against Brighton. It was not just a scoreline. It was how they were utterly dominated by Brighton. People say a lot of nice things about their first 30, 40 minutes against Real Madrid. Mm. But don't forget that Madrid came to that game with a 2 0 cushion. We saw it last season with Manchester and Ragnick. The moment it is clear to players, that, and it happens even in politics, there's, a, there's what you call limb dog status for presidents. Yeah. Once a new president is elected, people list, literally just stop listening. I to see what you one. did there. No, I'm just saying that I see generally, what you did there. generally, once people know that they are not in it for the long term, they, they psychologically, they, they just, just out. switch off. But the question I want to ask Mr. Olise is this Chelsea. I've got a large squad, right? If you listen to most top managers, they typically talk about how they prefer to coach smaller groups. What do you think will be the thinking behind what Todd and these guys have done to have such an expanded group that appears now almost uncoachable or are not receptive to the to the training of coaches? I would say Chelsea won't lose all their games till the end of the season. Also, do you agree? Uh, so, these are stats for you here now. So, Chelsea, they've made 112 uh, squ uh, squad changes this season. They have won um, 12. No, no, no. 12. no, 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 no. And, so, so, and, and this is, if memory serves me right, this is 12 more than every other team in the league. So, I just very like, stable. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, I think um, Thiago Silva... A lot of that can also. be accrued to um, Graham Potter's no, 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 no. I mean, constant no, no, I mean, no, It's not, from not, the top. No, I mean, not, not just that, top. but then remember that uh, I think Thiago Silva mentioned something where he said they've had to expand the dressing room because they have so many players. I remember... <laughs> no, no, but to be honest, remember that when you... hilarious. Remember when you're a kid and you're, you're, you want to go for a party and you tell your mom, oh, you don't have any clothes. And she goes, yeah, that's because you have too many clothes. And you end up wearing the wrong outfits for the wrong event. Right. Uh, Mr. Olise, I also want to throw in again, uh, while you answer that, um, we do also have the angle of the owner of the team going into the dressing room exactly. uh, and speaking to the players. Now, there's a school of thought that says, ha having spent 600 and something million <laughs> on on these players, you're not going really really like to tell me I'm not going to go and tell them, get your stuff together because we're looking bad. Uh, but having said that, I also know that the great man, Arsene Wenger, who you, are, uh, you, you, you currently work with on, on, a, on a board with FIFA, um, has also said that we need to draw a line for where, you know, ownership gets involved in the playing side of things. That's a nice one. Mm. That's an insult to the coach. That means you don't know what you're doing. So I need to come in and to do it. That's even the way. That yep. even takes away the respect from the players. And exactly. top coaches will never accept it. But the top coach might even, um, you know, because I give an example. Super Eagles, there was a time when we had coaches, they were good, but they are the same things they couldn't handle. Mm. Like sometimes when the player, when the player is like messing up on the page, you know, and the coaches maybe they are not too good. We get into the dressing room at the National Stadium when the coach is on there, I take stay outside for them. We close the door and then ourselves will we, we, we talk to ourselves. ourselves. And sometimes maybe you wrestle up somebody against the wall and tell them, hey, what's the wrong is wrong with you? You know, okay, stop stop playing with the ball when we are working hard for it, you know. And then we let the coach in. But we're getting success because we have the player power. I personally feel Chelsea, they appointed Lampard because in my I might be wrong. I think they already signed the coach for next season. Mm. But he's probably at the moment working somewhere. So we cannot leave that job now and talk about service, okay? Let's just put somebody that we can I want to see what going on let the other person come in. That is my own belief on But it's wrong for a person to go into this Well, fair enough. Thank you for for that uh, insightful view. Uh, it's time for us to also get um, our Twitter space uh, going, get people involved. Um, I'm excited at the fact that, you know, once you have such a legend as Sunday Ulisse on the show, everybody seems to have some something to, to share or a question <laughs> to ask. And um, it's 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 with a lot of excitement that I'm actually going to let some people into the, the space right now so they can actually get their comments in. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is looking into the incoming week. Um, because of the FA Cup and, of course, the um, some teams not featuring in the Premier League this season, the games that we'll be focusing on will, of course, be uh, very few. But one team seems to be involved a couple of times. Uh, well, yeah, pretty much. So we're looking at Newcastle taking on Spurs. Uh, we're also looking at Manchester City taking on Arsenal. Spurs taking on Manchester United on Thursday. So I'm going to open up the Twitter space now and get uh, people's opinions. Nigerian Scouser, please open your microphone and tell me, who do you think is winning Newcastle versus Spurs tomorrow? Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, last week, I I gave Newcastle the win against Villa and we also how that ended. But, uh, so let's see how this one went. Okay, the Nigerians have always believed Spurs is a very shitty team. Wow. It's going to be a clean sheet, a tight game, and a 1 0 win for Newcastle. Okay, that's your take it's on very that boring particular match, game. Um, what do you obviously yes. you support Liverpool? Less, the less said, the better. Yes. Do you have a particular question you want to ask Sunday Lisa? This is your one opportunity, and I'm going to give you that 
don't ask a crazy question because <laughs> we we'll just know answer it. No, no, no. Do you have a question? I, I, I want for, to. For coach? Yeah, I have one. Go ahead. Yeah, the um the third bully situation. I just wanted to ask, like, am I right to believe that if any owner at all wants to get involved in the players' affairs and the coaches' affairs, he shouldn't be bully because, to the best of my knowledge, he doesn't have much experience in the football world he doesn't have much knowledge in the football world but i personally believe he's overdoing it so i don't know I, I, am i wrong for thinking that you're way asking, because... you're asking mr lise so i'll let him answer but i, I was going to say uh, if i was when i was spending 600 million nobody asked me about my knowledge about football <laughs> but go ahead <laughs> my response to it is that um, well if you think you're the owner of the club then you shouldn't employ somebody to clean to clean the toilet then. Go clean it yourself because you, <laughs> it, right? because you spent 600 million to pay for the toilet in the first place. So I'm going to clean it. You know? But that is so. If you employ me as a, as a certified coach who has spent years studying my trade, doing work and everything to coach a team, then fire me if I'm not doing a good job, but don't interfere in my work while I'm doing it. You know, you, you know, as, uh, one, of the, one of the strengths of being a leader is the ability to delegate authority, yeah. to delegate responsibilities. You have a coach, you have a sports director, you have a team doctor, you have everything. Now, it's a different thing if the president is calling the team doctor to say, please tell me the health of Dunbar. Is he injured? What, what's happening? You know, because I'm paying for him and I want to know what is happening to him. Yeah. But you can't come to the dressing room. What is, look, if the president comes to the dressing room, what is he going to tell the players that is wrong by the other finger? Practically, he doesn't know it. He doesn't know that they are being overrun in the midfield. He doesn't know that they are, they are not doing well because the players are not listening to the coach. Who from, from his point of view, he could be seen it as him coming in to motivate the players. Like, oh, the owner of the club is so concerned about the way we're playing. He's come downstairs to actually try and inspire us to do better. And from think, a motivational I, 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 point of view. I also think, Jimmy, this is a good time to ask, you know, uh, Mr. Olisa this. When you were in the Super Eagles, uh, as we've seen with other Super yes. Eagles um, teams, we've seen sometimes governors, heads of states, you know, I mean, top officials Chiefs. come into the dressing room or to your camp to come and, in quotes, motivate. motivate. Sometimes we cash. Do you, while you were playing, did you consider those things effective? And now that you're a coach and you're operating at the highest and level what's your of view on it? technically, from a motivational point of view, do these things really work? Okay, during our time, nobody on the top dead on the dressing room. Hmm. Because some of us will work out. That's how strong we were and that's how we knew our limits. And most of the players in our generation were not hungry. Hmm. That means if they can tell you all the all things. And we stood together as a team, you cannot punish one of us. So what they used to do, was come to the hotel before the game, mm -hmm. take their motivational speech, then it was And you have to realize that if you're really a top player, once you get to the bus driving to the stadium, you get into like a like a, 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 a you know like a zone. Mm -hmm. yeah, people like myself, I just put on my workman. I don't even talk to my colleagues anymore. I'm, I'm focused on what I'm gonna do. Unless when we start to sing our Nigerian songs in the bus, we take it off, you enjoy. Right. Now you cannot interfere. The only person I want to hear then is my boss telling me the coach. Sonny, I need you to move left, I need you to do right, this is what I need from you. Now, he goes to the next person. That is it. If you've noticed, since it started happening with the Super Eagles, it's been failing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true. I guess that answers the question. <laughs> I mean, clearly, clearly. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Nigerian Scouts, uh, for joining in. I want to take one more uh, comment from our Twitter space, a female comment. Sparkling Esther, what team do you support? And do you think Spurs versus Manchester United, how is that going to play out? Good afternoon or good morning. Depending on where you are, you're welcome. <laughs> I'm a Chelsea fan. It breaks my heart, though. I I overheard the I overheard Mr. Lisa he said the owners don't have any rights going into the dressing room. If you are if you are an owner of a club or anything you own, I felt you've you've put your 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 workers in place. You should allow them do their job. But if you should ask me currently, the whole Chelsea team are shit. I mean the players. I am there's no coach on earth that will succeed with this set of wow. players. Oh, no, not even Sunday only so so thought, thought you coach them himself. I mean, Is that what you're suggesting? I, I could remember I watched drug the, the drug bar, Lampard, Lampard, uh, John Terry, how they play. Even if a coach give them instruction when they get to feel if something gets uh, if something gets obvious you see them change formation they play what they know and they will deliver what is happening in chelsea that's by the way and for the tottenham and uh newcastle uh, match mm. I, i'm telling you newcastle are coming out victorious wow. believe you mm. me scoreline 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 will be 2-1 as we do have uh, Sunday Ulisse, uh, uh, Super Eagles ex international, uh, 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 a veteran of many, many leagues in European football, uh, do you have a question for him? My question for him is please, sir, 
<laughs> when you were a player and also a coach, please, I want to know, in the dressing room, do you need a leader to succeed in football? I mean, do you actually need someone who can speak to you to get you motivated? Do you think that is what Chelsea FC is lacking right now? Oh, uh, hey, sis. Good, good afternoon. Uh, that's, um, that's a very good question. I think um, you, we do need it. You do need it. You do need it. Because we are, we are all different um, individuals, but we always need somebody who can always you know, channel us onto the right way to follow. Um, because even during our time, we needed also some leaders in the group. But the leaders sometimes were even wrong too. So they never had it. Yeah. So you, so but you didn't need a leader. Without leadership, you have no chance of success. Well, uh, GGB, a, a sports uh, you and I follow as well, uh, the NFL. We know the owner of one certain uh, team that Dallas, Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys. <laughs> he's, he's always in the dressing room. And what happens? They he always usurps. He, they never win because he, he's always usurping the power of, of the of the uh, coach. Yeah, you, you you belittle the coach once you do that. Um, having said that, it's time for us to um also stake our claims. Of course, looking at major games that will be will be taking part. Uh, we'll be looking at this week. Talking about the first game Sunday, um, it's time for us to stake our claim, and we'll be asking who's winning that game between Tottenham Hotspur and Newcastle. Biola. Newcastle at home, right? Yeah, they are really, really good side at home. They've been really, really good. I think that all of this we saw against Aston Villa probably we wouldn't see it in place. Was they have that stability at the back that they've had all season? Mm. I think they'll go on and win. Spurs are a very confused side. Um, people underplay it, but they are in exactly the same position with Lampard. You know, and their own manager, Stellini, who was um, Conte's assistant. Now, you fired Conte. You have reached a consensus with Conte that his assistant can stay back. But the players already know that this guy is not going to be here next season, right? Um, and so, they do not necessarily have to... Um, I wouldn't say do what, because it is not conscious. It is just that you know that this guy does not have my future in his hands. And so, so, who's winning that game? Who's winning? Newcastle. Newcastle. Do you, want to, do you want to push a score? 2-1. You are the king of the show. So. <laughs> <laughs> 2-1 Newcastle. 2-1 Newcastle. All right, let me ask you a second game. The title decider, Man City Arsenal. Man City win 2-0. Man City win 2-0? Yep. Wow. You're clearly a Man U fan. Uh, and of course, Spurs versus Manchester United. I wonder what you say now. I think that game will be a draw. Yeah. Uh, Sitting I, on the fence. Yeah, I know, right? So, 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 so convenient. So, 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 so I, I say that because um, obviously United are off a very bad loss. Uh, more importantly is that United are without Licha and Verani, and they're mm. a completely different side. We have Harry Maguire, supposedly who's the captain. <laughs> who, you, know, you, you do have him. <laughs> yes, you do. You know who just... Um, I think one is that he's not a top level player, but number two as well, I think he's a magnet for trouble. So a draw is is, is a score draw. A draw because level. I think the Hurricane, you know, and the guys up front for Tottenham, they will get chances at the back with Maguire and go there, and they will get goals. All right, take point taken. Also coming to you now, um, same sequence, mm. Newcastle Spurs. How do you see that play now? Uh, Newcastle Spurs. I think Newcastle by you know there's this saying that your what your record says you are right, and uh it's, I mean, both clubs, they're kind of close to each other, but I think Newcastle are playing better, especially the fact that Newcastle are going to be at home. So I'll say Newcastle to win 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one Newcastle. Um, title decided, Manchester City versus Arsenal? Uh, title decided, this one, I'm definitely biased with this one. I, I think. <laughs> I was so, to say, so, no, 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 I am. No, no, I am. Because we will not accept no, it. No, this no, is, the last, to, this to, is exactly. the last chance he has to stick in there. There, there's After no, this game, there's nothing else. Exactly. So, so you can there, accept, you can no accept that you're not being objective. This no, is no, the no, Of course you. I'm not. Oh, okay, think, go ahead. This is definitely the finding me. And it's painful because I'm not that confident. But I I hope Arsenal going to win 3-2. 3-2. Because because City would actually give you chances to score. It depends if you take those chances. It's unfortunate that Arsenal is conceding so many goals because it might come down to goals difference. Exactly. And that might be so sad to lose a title based on that. And of course, the grudge match. We want we hate both teams. Oh, no, like, Spurs you, you United. Imagine, like, this the Saints of, and the Devils. These are one of those games where if it was anywhere mathematical in football where both of them where both teams could lose. Like this is exactly what you want I'm from this for game. That. I'm all uh, for that. but no, I think United are reeling now. Uh, they have so many injuries. Is uh, that old traffic? Mat- yeah, it's an old traffic, but Martial is out. Um Martinez, uh, Martinez Rashford is, Rashford is not out. in the same form he Ra- was. Rashford in. actually the game in Europe during the week, he actually looked like someone that was carrying something because he yeah. wasn't moving freely. I don't think he was totally exactly he wasn't moving freely so i think because of that i'm kind of leaning towards pause which is difficult for me to say but i'll say sports to win to one as well all right uh coach let's come to you mr olise we'll start off with newcastle versus spurs who's winning this and do you want to push for a score well to start with um let's not forget that newcastle struggled against aston villa yes not because newcastle were bad surprisingly surprisingly emery was in charge look emery is one of the best coaches in the world i know you like him very much um, I like his work, and I've, I've, been for, I've been fortunate to watch him coach his players on the pitch, and he's, uh, he's, he's extreme. He's extreme. What do you like most about him? Meticulous. He doesn't leave anything to chance. He, he, he brings his players, he works on the players. He doesn't tell them what to do. 
He shows them what to do. Having said that, uh, I expect Newcastle to beat Spurs. It might be big. It might be playing one. Okay. I, I uh, see something like that. Um, when you look at Man City Arsenal. Yes, sir. Ah, this is touching, you know. I know. Please don't break my heart. Personally, I feel that um, it's going to be very difficult for Arsenal to come out of this game with success. I think Arsenal might lose this game. Mm. Fact, uh, I think, can we push I, you for I, a prediction for scoreline? <laughs> I think they will lose maybe like 3 1. 3 1. Same score as at the Emirates. And mm-hmm. of course, your last game is Spurs versus Manchester United on Thursday. I see a draw coming up in that game. Mm. That seems I, to be I, the recurring theme. I, I see a 1 1 game. But I might add something to the Arsenal Man United Man City game. The result does not depend on Man City. Right. The result of this game depends on Arsenal. How they play. If Arsenal come out playing the way they played, when they played Man United, right. there is no way uh, uh, Man City will be there. Because they were, I found them so good when they played Man United. Right. Sure. But what if City play the way they played against Arsenal at the Emirates? <laughs> <laughs> all right all right um so having said that it's time for me to make my predictions i, I don't even know where to go now start, start, start with us <laughs> no, I will not. uh newcastle to take on spurs so yeah i see this going out to be a draw um tottenham obviously they lost their last game so they'll be yeah. doing better by winning by getting the point in this one um man city arsenal i expect man city to win this game uh but football is a it's a funny old game I do believe if the players rise up, like you said, if they are able to step up their game and play with the mentality of we need to kill this side and we're not taking anything less than three points out of this game. I think that mindset will help Arsenal a lot. It's been done. Arsenal has beaten Manchester City before. Mm-hmm. Coached by Arteta. So I do believe it could be it be done. I'll say Arsenal to win this one, two goals to one. Um, Man City or Arsenal? Arsenal to win this, two goals to one. You initially I, said you thought City will win. I'm in your mind. I've analysed it and I've realised <laughs> <laughs> And of course, uh, last but not least, uh, Spurs taking on Manchester United. I do believe Manchester United will bounce back. Uh, you might hate somebody, but you must see the truth. The reality is Manchester United are a better team than Tottenham Hotspur this season. And I think it will show in that particular game at Old Trafford. Mm-hmm. I expect Manchester United to win by three goals to nil. Emphatic uh, victory that would be. Uh, that would also open the door for Spurs hiring a new coach in time because they're wasting their time just doing the same thing Chelsea is doing. Um, that's my take. I want to use this last few minutes to say... Mr. Sunday Olise, it's been an honor having you on this show. Um, when you when you come on, a lot of people just keep quiet and listen because your wealth of knowledge, your your experiences that you've had, you've gone through in life, and of course, even on and off the pitch as well. I want to say, please continue doing what you're doing. Believe in the fact that you're touching lives and you're inspiring a lot of people to reach their full potential. And you know, you're an inspiration to all of us out here in Nigeria. Thank you for being you, sir. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. And on that note, to my uh, Two very stubborn musketeers. Thank you guys for joining on the Always show. A pleasure. Last word for you, BK. Man City to win the game. Ah, please. Also, <laughs> so, that, that, that was so predictable. I, I'd have been shocked if you said anything else, anything different. <laughs>